Today we're going to uncover three of the biggest and probably one of the most common mistakes people make when they're trying to lose body fat and build muscle. If you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Tom Sergey, and I run the Gorilla Platoon, which is an online physique transformation program where we get results like this, which is kind of nice, and then I get to report back the findings to you uh, on what has worked and then what has not worked. So let's uh, roll from here. Now, the first mistake that people will make when they're trying to pull off body fat specifically is they will start too low with their calories. So let's say you your maintenance is 2,500, people will start at like 1,800. Now, the only caveat to this is if you're 30 plus percent body fat, you can go quite a bit lower. But let's say you're anything like this, 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 this. This, this, like the average starting point for most people, you don't need to go really low. And the reason I say that is you go really low, you've got no driver for gym floor performance. I, you, you haven't got that much energy going in, so your performance on the gym floor is pretty whack. The goal was to develop tissue and pull off body fat. The goal was not to just pull everything off the frame and be left with fucking a bag of bones. That's not going to make you feel any better than you already do now. So your calories, you want to keep them as high as possible. So if we're going to do that, what are our options then? Well, you're going to keep them as high as possible. So firstly, it's going to sort out your metabolism because most people's metabolism has been fucking trashed. And essentially you've eaten such... If you take your food really low and you try and run off that, that'll work for a period of time, but eventually it won't. And then you've nowhere to really go from it. So you've, you've got minimal room to pull food after. And then if you do try... The deeper and deeper you go, the closer and, dare I say it, below resting metabolic rate you go, you're just going to put your body in a state of survival. It's not going to be enjoying dropping body fat at all. Like, your body doesn't want to be in a flight state for as long as it has to be. So, if you can keep food high, what it will do is, A, it will drive performance in the gym, but it will give you somewhere to go with it. Like, if you are starting your cut, you don't need to drop really low really fast because think about it, you've already been consuming a shit ton of calories anyway. Just by going in at a fair deficit of 250, 300, 350, you're going to see a drop-off at that. And you want to rinse that out for as long as possible until you don't see a drop-off with it. And then you've got somewhere to go with it, right? You can drop calories another 150. But what I would actually say is set your calories to a target. And uh, it's, it depends on where you're starting at. So if you look like this, 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 you want to set it about 200 calories just below maintenance. Because you're not that fat, right? You, you're not in bad condition at all. So you can get away with having it pretty, like quite a bit higher. Let's say you're sat more towards... 20% um, or like this, you you want to go a little bit more aggressive around like 500 or so. And if you start out like this, then again, you can start a little bit more aggressive than that. Um, but you don't want to be in and around the 17, 1800 calorie mark until the fucking absolute 11th hour of your diet to tell you the truth. Because if you do, it's going to be a long, cold time to go with it. Start high and then start to increase through output. And the way you do this through formal cardio, obviously you've got steps as well. Let's say you're running 10K steps. Um, keep that where it is. I, I, ideally, I'd like you to push steps before you even push cardio. But the problem is it comes with a higher cost of time, which a lot of you just don't really have the bandwidth to do. And I, I, do, I do get that and do appreciate it. Um, so with that, you can then increase through cardio 20 minutes daily. Um, and then increase and push it up. When you need to see that next change on the scale, boom, add another 10 minutes daily, now 30 minutes daily, and the scale weight will start to drop off again until it doesn't, and then you pull another lever, and now you're at 40 minutes. And only towards the back end, <coughs> excuse me, do you tend to pull from food, because that way you've kept food f for as high as you can, for as long as you can, and when you do decide to go and pull food, you'll be very responsive to that drop in food. If you start low and try go lower, not that much is is going to really uh, change. I, I've seen this happen first time, so that's that's my re I'm reporting my findings to you. You don't need to start, and it'll make the whole process a lot smoother as well. So you don't need to start really low, really fast. The next thing uh, people will get wrong is they'll believe there's a perfect exercise. Now, are some exercises better than others? Yes, but like honestly. People's problems is they they just don't really train hard enough. Like let's be honest, people train like lettuces. Like you you can see a killer in the gym where he's fucking sending it and he's got a big vein running across his forehead and he's sweating out and he's needing he's needed to actually time his rest periods to make sure he has enough rest because he's pushing it. People will try and find the perfect exercise and the fact that it's the exercise they'll try and get that to do the majority of the work. Now of course you want to work smart, but people lean on that too much. 
You'll know if you're training hard enough or not. I'll tell you how you'll know if you're training hard enough. I'll give you a quick example. The way you can gauge if you're training hard enough will determine uh, by the speed in which your reps are being run towards the back end of the set. So, of course, you want to go through your sets composed, driving the origin and the insertion of the muscle together. In this case, it's driving your humerus towards the midline of your body, getting the contraction here, staying composed, controlling the tempo on the way down. And now it's, it's going to start to get tough. Now, this is where you need to stay composed, get your breathing in check. And still continue to drive the origin and insertion together, but now it's under a serious challenge. So you go here, and then look at the speed in which this last repetition has been performed. I mean, I'm still speaking now, and I've still not finished it. What's that, like four seconds maybe to contract the muscle? When in the first repetitions, you're looking at 1.5 seconds. So... As a rule of thumb, if your last rep looks like that, you're training hard enough. If it doesn't look like that, let's be honest, you could probably train harder. And it's not that the exercise, like this, don't get me wrong, this is a nice exercise. It's a machine, so it's stable, it's loadable. It, the, I'm, I'm nailing in terms of the, the actual goal of the, of the movement and the muscle, which is drive your humerus towards the midline of the body because your chest starts here and runs across and inserts onto your humerus. So you just want to bring the two points together, nice and simple. Let's not overcomplicate it. But... What you want to make sure you're doing is driving with true intensity. So keep everything the same, good range of motion, good tempo, they, they're a given. But don't look for the exercise. The exercise is the exercise. And there are some that are better than others, absolutely. But what's going to get you the result is train like this really hard. Now, let's be honest, this is a nice machine, but dumbbells and barbells have been around for years. Why? Because they work and they add tissue to people's frames that know how to use the, the the equipment correctly it's really just how you use it as opposed to what it is itself so don't get too fixated on that uh, and then the last thing I'll say as to why people don't get in, in the shape that they want or the mistakes they make is honestly they just change the training split too often and what that does is it never gives you the opportunity to add true progression you're only kind of guessing because let's say you start a new program and for four weeks, you're doing um, a given exercise and you're progressing, boom, boom, boom. And you will do. When you start a new uh, program, for the first few weeks, your numbers will fly. Absolutely. And they'll get to a point eventually where they'll start to stick a bit. And you can grind out another rep, but you're really having to work for it. It's at that point, that point alone, you really don't want to change your program because now you're in the space of building true muscle. Up until that point... Your muscle was actually capable of lifting what you were lifting. It's more just from a neuro perspective and a motor perspective, your brain just wasn't switched on enough uh, to start at that load because it had not done the movement pattern before itself. It not nailed down the way that it feels, the, the way to contract properly. But after a few times of doing it, it has. And that's why you skyrocketed up so much. If you were to then change it again, it'd be like starting from scratch, picking a new exercise, starting from scratch. And that's what people do. They never see something out for long enough without then rechanging it and just wiping out all their progress. If they're just stuck with it from then on for another like eight weeks, they'd have added some nice tissue to the frame. I'm not telling you to do the same split all year. To tell you the truth though, boys, I actually do. I actually don't change my split at all. I, I may change the odd exercise here and there, maybe. But even then, like more than likely not because the fundamentals work. Like, let's be honest, hit the muscle in the lengthened position, i.e. where it's hardest at the bottom, hit the muscle in the shortened position where it's hardest at the top, plenty of volume, progressively overload it, and you'll be, you'll be okay. But what people will do is, and the reason they won't see that um, progression is, the threshold is here, they started here, new exercise, boom, 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 boom. Now we're starting to get into the threshold, ah, let's change the split. Never really got to there, whereas you, you, get, you, you work your way up to here, you're at the start line, the start line now, now it's time to fucking turn it on. Now it's time to actually, if you imagine this line is down here, now it's time to really make some progress. Go to the gym the next time. Grind, grind, grind. Got the extra reps. Sick. We move fucking an extra 270 pounds on that load. Goes in the gym the next time. Right, we did 10 last time. Boom, let's put a little bit more weight on. 10 more pounds. Boom, we got the next amount of reps. Okay, we got eight. Goes in the gym the next time. Boom, we got nine. We progressed. And again, boom, we get 10. Add the weight. Repeat, repeat, repeat. It's at that point that you're building true muscle, but people will not give a program that much um, longevity to actually see that through. And it's, it's honest, I'm full foul for this. That's how I know it. it's bad. I'm telling you from first-hand experience, I used to do that all the time. Bad. And do you know where it comes from? And it's, it's easy to see how people get led down that path. It comes from the fact that 
we think shock the muscle, the muscle will grow. And you know why we think that? Because when you do that, what do you get? Doms. You get fucking doms. And every man's weakness is doms because we're like, ah, got doms. Fucking good. I'm not gonna lie, my chest is sore from yesterday. Fucking must have got must have been a good session. Doms, right? Doms is not the driving factor for muscle growth. Doms doesn't mean you grew muscle. Doms is a byproduct of you training fucking hard. Now, if you just do it, if you go do a random exercise, like if I make you sit and do a hundred eyebrow raises right now, you'll have doms in your forehead tomorrow. Did you grow muscle? Probably not. You just did something you've not done for fucking ages. I buy you those cat shit like five finger toe shoes, take you for a one mile run, your calves are going to have doms for about a week. Did you grow muscle? No. It's just the fact you did something new and you shocked the body and the body doesn't want to feel that pain. So it will then adapt to it. But that's not going to grow muscle. What will grow muscle is sticking to one movement pattern and sticking at that for the longest period of time and grinding session after session, forcing it to do something it was not able to do the, the week before. That's what grows true muscle. So Fix those three points and you will see some sweet, sweet gains. If you found this video useful, uh, subscribe and I'll see you tomorrow.